Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. In today's video, we're looking at a very clean ship. This one is called the Aegis Gladiator, which is this lovely thing over here. So this is a small block fighter that features a large array of weapons evenly spread out across the ship. So if you were to lose one section of the ship, you wouldn't be completely disabled while in combat. Pressing F10 and finding it in the spawn menu, the Gladiator is 1,339 small blocks using the Wasteland, Heavy Industry and Warfare 2 DLC packs. We've got no information whatsoever on the Steam Workshop page, so we'll just give this a thumbs up, which I already have. Move around to the very front, we'll have a quick look around the outside, then I'll fly around for a bit, see what I can do, then maybe slam it into a nearby asteroid. I'll also have a link to the skybox I'm currently using in the description below, it does have some pink patches here and there, but for the most of it, it's just a large dark area with one hell of a lot of stars. Anyway, back to the ship at the very front, this is what we get. So front and centre we can see a wasteland spotlight to light up the darkness with some concrete grey blocks right behind it. We can also see some green and white blocks which is going to make up the main portion of the ship, as well as two hydrogen thrusters and the glow of an interior light just sitting on top of our fighter cockpit. If we were moved onto the side which has the sunlight, which will be this side, we can see just how clean this ship is. It's making fantastic use of the wellless pattern, which is what is causing that effect. Over to this section, we've got a bunch of hydrogen thrusters to help us on our left and right. We can see a couple more underneath, as well as a bunch of magnetic plates to land this thing down on. Another interior light with that lovely orange glow. If we were to come around onto this section, we can see our wing. Our wing has been angled via a couple of hinges towards the back of the ship. But this is where we got a couple of weapons, which are two rocket launchers and two Gatling guns. We have to come to the edge of the wing and look at it like so, that's all that is. We have to come underneath the wing, past our cargo containers, and over to this section. Those are our hinges, which is how the wing has been angled. We also got a couple of beam blocks, adding us some more decoration. There's some more heat vents. And then around towards the very back there, a couple more hydrogen thrusters. And then some great use of some LCD screens, acting as fake ion thrusters. Then if we were to move all the way up and start to look down, we've got some fantastic use of our armoured panels, just covering up the backs of those hydrogen thrusters to limit the damage they take in combat. We've also got some more fins at the top with a yellow tip, even more great use of our cylindrical columns. There's some more hydrogen thrusters. Then towards the very front there, there's the light above the cockpit. Just coming down and underneath, here's the rest of our weapons. So we've got auto cannons and two more Gatling guns. There's the other orange interior light. There's some more hydrogen thrusters to make sure we keep off the ground. There is a connector to help dock this thing up. We see even more graves for our cylindrical columns. There's the bottom of our rocket launchers and Gatling guns on the wings. And there is our hydrogen tank to make sure this thing is nice and powered. If we were to just come up to here and peek around, there is our ion thrusters to help this thing stop. And there we go. That is a very brief look around the outside of the Eagles Gladiator. Hopefully I'm saying that correctly. I always want to call it Aegis for some odd reason. Yes, that is that for the outside. Now what I can do, just grab hold of my character, bring up the HUD, because these are the only controls we get on this ship. So pressing number one, this is going to be for all of our Gatling guns around the ship. Pressing number two is going to be for our rocket launchers, which are sitting on the wings. If you wanted to, you could add a script for the salvo script to make sure they fire on their one, two, three, four pattern, because otherwise they're going to be like they are now, firing all together. Number three is then for our auto cannons, where we've got two of them sitting right at the front. Number four is for our camera, which is sitting in between our guns so we can precisely aim and hopefully hit our targets. But it might be a bit hard with the auto cannons because they do kick up a lot of smoke. So we'll switch over to the Gatling guns, and that's a lot better. Coming out of that and pressing number seven, this is going to be for all of our thrusters around the ship. So we'll set angle the camera appropriately. There we go, press number seven. That's turned off everything, and now we're in a power save mode. We could use this as a little cruise control, so force to move forwards and then switch that off. There we go, we can now cruise along until we need to turn them on to slow ourselves down. Number 8 is then for our connector to lock and unlock it. Number 9 is for the magnetic plates underneath to lock and lock them. Then for tab number 2, 3 and 4 we got nothing else. So it's time to test this out by flying it around. Moving forwards, this is what we get. So we're not the fastest thing in the world, which is quite odd for a small fighter. Feels like it should be a lot faster than it is, but at the end of the day it's fine for what it's trying to achieve. Coming to a stop, we appear to be equally as fast. We could always do a 180, try and stop ourselves a bit quicker, but like I said, it's a bit equal forwards and backwards, so it doesn't really make too much difference. Moving left, 
And moving right, a surprising amount of speed on that. Then moving down. And then moving up. Moving up is faster than absolutely everything on this ship. So you could always fly it like this if you want to get somewhere very quickly. Anyway, coming to a stop and then wiggling my mouse around. This is what we get for gyroscope controls. It's extremely responsive. It has the very, very slightest hint of weight on here. But it does suit this size of ship. And is generally what I prefer when it comes to a small fighter. So one final thing to do with this ship is of course slam it into an asteroid. See how it crumbles or if it even crumbles at all. And that'll be that for this video. And here we go, we're now approaching the asteroid. We are at maximum speed. Let's just start shooting it with our Gatling guns for no reason. And oh look, an all patch. Anyway, straight into there. And as per usual, it didn't really crumble like I was thinking. We just lost the front. We are still perfectly flyable. And there we go, it can survive a full speed collision into an asteroid. And we got still our guns on our side wings and our guns underneath. It looks like we just lost the auto cannons. Anyway, thank you all for watching and I'll be back with another video some point soon. Bye bye.